Hello, my name is Joe Naus, and I am a technical consultant with Revere Electric. Today I'd like to show you how to use Integrated Architecture Builder to migrate a PLC5 to a Control Logics platform. Integrated Architecture Builder, or IAB, is a free tool with many different features to aid in upfront hardware design. Please look below for a link to download this tool from Rockwell Automation. IAB is a graphical rules-based software that aids in the hardware design of an automation system. IAB can prevent issues such as missed parts or overloading a power supply. There are multiple migration wizards in IAB to assist with modernizing a legacy control system to the latest technology. But let me show you how to use IAB to convert from an obsolete PLC5 to a control logics platform. So when you open Integrated Architecture Builder up, the first thing we need to do is create a new project. So we'll create a project, and I'm just going to type in the workspace name, PLC5. Two control logics. Then I'm going to select over here on the left side where it says Migration Workspaces. We'll choose Migration Wizard. As you can see, there's one for the Slick 500 and one for MicroLogix as well as Distributed I.O. But for today, we'll focus on the PLC5. We'll hit OK. And then when we get this interface, what we do is we just simply hit Add a Chassis. And we'll just use the default PLC001. Now here, what we do is we go up in the top left corner and we have to select what chassis is currently being used in the PLC5 platform. So we'll choose an A2B. Now the A2B is an eight slot chassis. So what we have to do is look at and find which chassis do we want to use in the 1756. I typically like picking one that's close to being about the same size. So we'll choose the A10 and hit OK. And now you'll see that you have a, an empty PLC5 rack on the top and the equivalent control logics on the bottom. So now what we have to do is select a power supply. So again, these are the PLC5 power supplies. So let's just say there is a P7 in the rack. And then here we need to choose what a 1756 version. So we'll pick a PA75, hit OK. Then there's a, do we want to use a conversion kit or do we want to do a straight up rip and replace? If you have the room, I highly recommend the conversion kit because what it does is it, it eliminates any new drilling in the panel. It also doesn't require any wires to be uh, removed and reinserted in the new I.O. cards. So it's a, it, it saves a lot of time and it reduces the amount um, of labor that's required. Then we'll just choose wiring type screw. And then what we do, it's, it's a pretty simple process from here. What we do is you just find your processor from the list. So I'm going to say that we have an L40E. And then you left mouse and hold the left mouse key and just drag the processor over to the processor slot. Now when you get to this point, what the software is going to do is say, well, what do you want to replace the processor with? So in our case here, I'm just going to choose an L72, and I'll choose an EN2TR. Now, these processors typically have remote I.O., so if you need a remote I.O. channel in your card, you can also select one of these. But in my situation here, we're going to just say that we're getting rid of remote I.O. It's old, it's discontinued, and uh, it, we're getting rid of all of it at the same time for this example. And we hit OK. And you can see here that this, now we can graphically see the processor here and then the cards that we're adding down below. Now we're going to go and do the I.O. So again, we'll pick the I.O. And we're going to just choose digital for now. And as you can see, there's a pretty large number of digital I.O. cards that are available in, in the list. So we should be able to pick what we need. So we'll start with an AC input card. So I'm going to grab this IAD and just drag it over. And sometimes these... These older PLC5 cards can be configured to run in different ways. So you can see it can run as either 90 to 146 volts DC isolated input or, or basically your 120 volt AC. 
So in most cases, it's going to be 120 volt AC. So we'll choose this. OK. And you can see it built the card up. Now we're going to go down. I'm going to pick an AC output card. And a lot of times, if you don't know what um, these cards are, you know, usually in the drawings, you'll have a rack layout that shows you the model numbers for the cards. So hopefully you have that. That does help a lot with these conversions. So I'm going to drag this OAD up. And you can see there is no choice for this, and it's just going to pick an OA16 card. Now let's just pick... Let's pick some analog cards. So we'll chart, we'll do an IFE. So I'll drag an analog input card in. And now here it's going, all right, well, we're going to use an IF16, but now we need to know, are we using differential current, voltage, or single-ended current or voltage? I'm going to pick differential current. And then let's pick an OFE, one which is an analog output. There we had only one choice, which is an OF8I. Let's go and do a couple more digital cards. So we'll do an ID here. And then we'll do a OB. And let's just pick a couple more cards to fill out the rack. We'll do an IBN. Then we'll do an OBD. Now here's another card where we have to go about and pick. So I'm going to pick the OB16E. Now we have a completed rack. So I'm going to hit OK. Now if I need to add another chassis, you would just hit this Add Chassis button. Or if I have to edit the chassis, I can hit the edit right here and go back right into it. Okay. But for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to generate the hardware. So we hit this button here. And now if I go over to the bottom on the left side, there's a tab called hardware. If I click on this, here is my completed rack. So now I'm just going to hit the save button, go to file. In Project BOM, say yes, I have an internet connection. And then it's creating a bill of material. And here it is. So again, what you can see is you have, here's your chat C for your control logics and your power supply and your processor and your I.O. cards. And then you can see that there's these th conversion modules Here's the mounting assembly. Here's the conversion cable. So this software program not only just picked all the control objects hardware for you, but it also picked all the conversion modules, cabling, and mounting assemblies that you needed. And then it also included some software to help with the actual program conversion. So at this point, you get a good idea of what the conversion from a hardware perspective would cost. It is list price, but at least it gives you an idea. So at this point, if you wanted to, you can save it to you know, a spreadsheet if you wished um, or save it to XML. But at least it gives you an idea of what something's going to cost. So hopefully this helps with the IAB portion of converting hardware from a PLC5 to control logics. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Bye-bye.